Austral's management committee, BHB representatives and other sponsors of the club met informally today to thrash out sections of the Bradley report. Austral's have been asked to submit their feelings on the multi-page document to the New South Wales Soccer Federation as soon as possible. The meeting agree with Dr Bradley's report in principle and would like it implemented immediately, which would see a representative from Newcastle in the big time somewhere in the next two years. However, a stumbling block could be the Northern New South Wales Soccer Federation, which will meet next Tuesday night to consider the Austral's plea for backing. Meanwhile, for the State League team, a more pressing engagement is their clash with Wollongong City tomorrow at Birmingham Gardens, a match Austral's must win to stay in touch with the leaders. There's no more ifs, buts or maybes. The face of Newcastle and its inner city transport system is destined for radical change. The state government's vision for a revitalised Newcastle centres on the sale and redevelopment of the Honeysuckle Goods Yard. The unsightly 12.5 hectare site is to become the new heart of the city. The land will be sold or perhaps leased under the control of a newly created land development corporation. The thrust will be to encourage investment, tourism and inner city living, capitalising on the prime harbourside location. There were few surprises with that part of the government's package, but the Deputy Premier's pronouncement on the fate of the inner city rail link is bound to prove controversial. The decision to terminate the rail line at Civic and build a new $13 million interchange effectively derails the City Council recommendation for a Hunter Mall station near Brown Street. The Council's hastily contrived option was dismissed today as one that came out of the blue at the finish. The Civic Council made that decision on a casting vote of the Mayor. Uh, we took that into consideration in looking at the whole process and uh, in this particular occasion we didn't uh, agree with that particular decision given the fact that it was six hall anyway. Trains will continue running to the central business district while a new station is being developed. The existing transport corridor will stay publicly owned with a future yet to be determined for the soon to be defunct Newcastle station. Mr Murray rejects any suggestions of an asset sell-off, heralding the redevelopment as Newcastle's best chance to be a city of the 21st century. Leslie Robinson for NBN News. The point of a rifle was the only welcome awaiting English supporters in Bologna today. Regardless of behaviour and with no explanation from the police, English fans were herded at gunpoint from railway and bus terminals, forced to board coaches to the stadium many hours before kickoff by a police force determined they spend as little time as possible in the city centre. It followed a night of confrontation involving young Englishmen, Italians and the police. The most serious incident centred on this bar on the seafront at Rimini. A raucous party turned to violence when the bar was stormed by Italian police, rounding up English supporters they say had been throwing bottles at passing traffic. In many cases, punishment was administered on the spot. English youths were being arrested all around the resort. By the end of the night, the police had ferried away 250 supporters to await deportation. There was more trouble in Bologna when young Italians celebrating Italy's World Cup victory began to taunt English fans who'd gathered around the railway station. At the first hint of confrontation, the Carabinieri moved in. As usual, they appeared more willing to crack English heads than Italians. But the football authorities and the government fear the image of English football has taken another battering.
It was about 11.40 when the two teenagers hailed a taxi at the corner of Smart Street and the Pacific Highway in Charlestown. The driver had no reason to be suspicious. One youth sat in the front seat, the other climbed in behind. They asked to be taken to Mahogany Crescent at Gateshead. The driver obliged. There was little conversation on the way, but when the driver reached the street, his fares ordered him to stop. The youth in the back seat produced a small knife, which he held to the man's throat. They demanded his wallet containing several hundred dollars, then ordered the driver out of the vehicle. The taxi disappeared into the night, turning up the next day at Dudley Beach. We believe that uh, persons could have seen the cab going from the Gateshead area to Dudley Beach, which is a rather direct way. We believe uh, they could be able to help us initially with the cab, and uh, mainly we believe two people in the cab at that time. They would have been in some sort of hurry, uh, but being the lateness of the night, the particular night in question, Sunday night, and uh, say around about 12, half past 12, that there weren't that many people around, and uh, the people who did see him would have been a bit out of the unusual, I would think. Police are looking for a 16 or 17 year old male of slight build, about 178 centimetres tall with black straight collar length hair. At the time he was wearing a red and white striped beanie and a light blue sloppy joe. He was carrying a tan rucksack. The other man is 18, of medium build, about 180 centimetres tall with black hair. He was wearing a dark blue sloppy joe and was armed with a small knife. If you can help police, call them now on the Crime Stoppers number 008. 251 009. There's a reward of up to $1,000 paid anonymously for information leading to an arrest. The number once again is 008 251 009. Every household in Australia now has one of these tax packs, with extra copies available at newsagents. They cost nearly $5 million to produce, but the benefits, according to the Taxation Department, are immense. It will help people get their tax form right. Uh, there's a lot of tips in there in what to do. It will take them logically through the, uh, the, the, the process of filling out a tax form and uh, I'm sure they will uh, fully understand things they're entitled to and be able to claim them. It may look daunting at first and it does require time and concentration but most people will find they only need to answer eight out of the possible 40 questions. You don't have to read every page, only if the question at the top relates directly to you. And if you find you've got a problem, Taxation Office staff are ready to help out. Throughout July and August, staff at Newcastle will be increased 100% with 16 manning phones and 8 handling face-to-face -face inquiries during the extended hours of 8.30am to 7 at night. Processing staff are busy finishing off last year's returns, ready for the new influx of 600,000 returns that will arrive between July the 1st and the end of October. But it's stressed that an early return means an early refund. And for those who can't manage on their own, special help is at hand. Well this year, uh, as, as we have in the last couple of years, we're running a tax help program where we're um, training people from those communities in how to help others fill out the tax form. So help will be available in the different ethnic communities and uh, with the elderly uh, in helping to fill out the tax form. Sydney made a reasonable start, but then BHP Austral took over and controlled the match from the fifth minute of the first half. No result though after 45 minutes of play, and it looked as if Austral's would be denied once again. New striker Milan Maletic hit the bar for the second time in two weeks on the resumption after good lead-up work by Gary Phillips and Paul Gristevsky. And then it happened. Phillips gave a brilliant ball to Namoff and he dazzled his way around the defence and his cross was spot on where Kristevsky climbed high over the keeper to notch goal number one. Then Nemov shot wide, Kristevsky also thumped one just wide, and Australs looked pretty dangerous. It was Nemov again whose right foot was on fire, and on hand to lend ahead was Ralph Mayer, and BHP Australs led 2-0. One minute later, Phillips laid on a sensational ball for Nemov, who took play to the edge of the penalty area, and with a little flick, the ball lobbed at Mayer's feet, and he made no mistake for his second and Australs third. 
Less than 60 seconds later, Namoff crossed once again, and this time Robbie Ironside climbed above the defence, and Nostrils, with a 4-0 win, are back on track. To the untrained eye, the Griffith Duncan Theatre may have seemed a long way from Swan Lake this morning, but it was in fact playing host to more than 1,300 of the country's finest ballerinas. Those under eight had their moment under the bright lights in the musical comedy jazz section, and the effects of the video age were obvious. Others brought a touch of youthful exuberance to some old standards. The Estedford is the second largest of its kind in Australia and the standard won the praise of one of the nation's finest. A lot of what I'm seeing so far um there's some good talent coming up, some very good talent. There's a very high standard here in Newcastle. The older dancers donned their points to face the challenge of classical routines, something they'll do countless times if they're to fulfil their ambitions and make it to the top. Well, depending when they start, um, but certainly as they in the teenage years, it takes uh, it's virtually full time, full time training for at least two or three years before they become professional at it. With money, prestige and scholarships at stake, it was supposed to be all deadly serious competition. Fortunately, that point seemed lost. With the abuse of the environment a major political and social issue, the marketplace is looking to safer and more friendly forms of packaging to sell its products. Green is um, very much on a lot of people's minds. Oak, in association with peach advertising and combined packaging, has developed the Coroshell, a three-layered paper container which keeps the product hot but won't be hot environmentally. This package will break down in a matter of months. Polystyrene foam can take hundreds of years. The Coral Shell has attracted industry interest. Oak was presented with the Silver Star Award for the design, outplacing 500 other competitors from throughout Australia. In May, a report commissioned by the Newcastle City Council recommended the removal of enclosures and the relocation of the animals. Protesters, known as the Black Butt Support Group with 15,000 signatures, are opposing the removal of the animals. Initially, the alarm bells went out when it was understood that uh, there was a, a consultant's report suggesting removal of the animals. And uh, this led to great concern and uh, so many of the Newcastle population have shown that concern uh, in many ways and certainly putting their name on sheets of paper stating that they want the animals retained in the park. The support group is recommending a program of animal care including upgrading of the enclosures and maintenance of the park. Park rangers and council officers have a similar proposal. The council will make a decision on the matter in three weeks.
Cardiff's Craig Peavy is fighting for his boxing life tonight when he confronts Filipino Little Benguan. Peavy was first to hit the scales and weighed in at 57.75 kilograms and immediately declared he's raring to go. I've watched, I've watched him uh, spar three rounds with the same guy I've sparred with. And he, he's just a sort of uh, typical Filipino, five foot, and uh, he just walks up, so I don't reckon he's going to catch me. For Benguan, weight wasn't as much a concern as the cold snap in the Hunter Valley, and with tracksuit on, he tipped the scales at 56.45 kilos, giving Peavy not only a height and reach advantage, but an ample weight advantage. For Peavy, it's the left hand that Benguan will have to watch. My left hand's been the trainer, he's been the best it's ever been. Ever since I started boxing, I've been using it a lot more, so uh, I think the left hand can win the fight just by itself. The conference was opened last night by Acting Minister for Sport and Recreation, Gary West, the first to admit there was something amiss in the world of school sport. The standard of school sport, and indeed student participation in school sport, has dwindled rapidly, while school spirit, in many areas, hangs limply by poorly frequented sport competitions. But when the conference reconvened this morning, the New South Wales Government found itself under attack. Another comment I have to make is that with the possible exceptions of Queensland and Tasmania, no state education authority places a high value on providing children with an education on movement in sport. And I believe New South Wales just beats Victoria for the bottom spot on the ladder. The Department of Education quoted figures showing 75% of teachers thought the school sport program to be successful or very successful. That opinion wasn't shared by the pupils. A recent survey of Hunter School children produced some startling statistics. 83% wanted more time allocated to sport during school hours, and 93% would like the opportunity to try new sports at school. The study was headed by Newcastle University's Warren Thompson, who will chair a discussion on teacher training when the conference continues tomorrow. Tony Mercer and Bev Maddox have been making their environmentally friendly grocery bags for almost a year. Demand from friends made them realise there was a market for non-plastic reusable bags and Matilda's Grocery Bag Company was born. Tony and Bev are two graduates of the Hunter Regional Enterprise Agency's business course and they're about to turn their hobby into a business. The course has really taught us everything. We didn't know how to get started and the course has put us on the right track and shown us how we can present our product to the public. The course is for people over 40 who have a business idea but don't know how to start. Through contact with business people, tax specialists and accountants, students are shown how to produce a business plan. After receiving their certificates from MP Alan Morris, the graduates left to launch their ventures as diverse as Egyptian art and fish mounting. Very much online to play in their first final series since entering the Winfield Cup in 1988, the Newcastle Knights notched good wins against Eastern Suburbs and the Gold Coast in the past two weeks, games that they were expected to win. With the four competition points from those two matches, the Knights are now only one point outside the top five and incredibly two wins away from the top of the table. Brisbane, Canberra and Balmain are looking good in the double chance spots, but Penrith, Manly, Cronulla and Newcastle, all with difficult matches this weekend, which could see the picture become a little clearer. Of the four games, Newcastle would appear to have the easiest battle against the luckless Rabbitohs. Last year's minor premiers are languishing in second last place on the ladder, with only two wins, and have had more than their fair share of off-field drama as well. But when you take a close look at their lineup for Sunday, it really is perplexing to find a reason for South's form slump. On paper it's all there, the players have got the ability but uh, I suppose you could say they seem to have lost the plot somewhere and uh, uh, being the, the club with the traditions they have and the record they have it's, uh, it's hard to understand so uh, 
let's hope South can lift their game as they go further down the track, but if they want to hang off for another week, that's fine by us. The Knights are at full strength, although there is concern re Peter Johnston's fitness. And the hierarchy of the Blue and Reds are assured there's no complacency with the Knights ready to take their spot in the five. Uh, mate, they're very keen and I think you'll find uh, you'll get the right result. The weather station at Nobby has recorded a top gust of 59 knots, or about 120 kilometres an hour, shortly before midnight. This eclipsed several 58 knot gusts recorded during some nights earlier this week. By daylight, there was little evidence of last night's big blow. Lake Macquarie State Emergency Services officials said a strip from Kurenbong to Bullaroo and Spears Point south to Valentine took the brunt of the fierce wind. A house at Balmoral lost most of its roof. Part of it landed on the family car, squashing the vehicle. A tree was blown onto a house at Bolton Point, causing minor damage, while a house in Kurenbong had part of its roof blown away. Local weather officials expect the hunter to have some respite from the gale force winds this weekend. Senior Constable Gary Butt spent three days searching for victims in the ruins of the workers' club. His voice trembled today as he remembered finding the dead. The police rescue officer heard screams of help as he entered the collapsed building. He came across an elderly man trapped in the rubble, almost stepping on him in the pitch blackness. The man, later identified as Albert Bender, said, for Christ's sake, get me out. As rescue workers struggled to free Mr Bender, the order came to evacuate. When they returned 10 to 15 minutes later, the elderly man was dead. Senior Constable Butt said he felt movement in the huge concrete slab suspended in the basement. About the moving slab, he said, I didn't like to frighten people. I didn't say anything to anyone. Much of the cross-examination this week centred on the police decision to clear the club of rescue personnel. Today the coroner heard it was advice from a civil engineer which led to the controversial directive. Robert Sarash pointed police to the huge wall leaning precariously towards the rescue operation. Fears this wall could collapse together with talk of an aftershock led to the police directive. Aftershocks were the buzzword of the hour, he said. As he made an inspection of the building from an overhead crane, the engineer heard cries of help from the top of the club. Upon climbing from the crane, he found roadie Patrick Murray buried under bricks. Mr Murray has been a regular visitor to the inquest this week, joining other victims in the public gallery as the events of December 28 unfold. Leslie Robinson for NBN News.